And now, reporting for Outside the Lines, Bob Lee. This morning, a danger throughout all of sports, one that can quickly escalate from a nuisance to a health threat. Staph infections, and they occur in clusters such as a small group of surfers off the same Southern California beach, or, for example, four years ago, several St. Louis Rams players. Now, only five Rams players developed infections, but out of nearly 90 players and employees who were tested, 40% carry the basis of the infection. When we say infection, we mean a serious threat to a player's career and, in some cases, his life. Steve Delson on this silent danger. The Milwaukee Bucks hired this company to try and kill the bacteria in their locker room. These treatments have also been done in Major League Baseball, as well as the NFL. In football, you think about grueling injuries, you think about broken bones, dislocated bones, uh, torn ligaments, things of that nature, you know, things that involve physical contact or some form of physical action, but to get a staph infection, I was like, that was way out of left field. Gilbert looking, slant, Braylon Edwards got it! In September 2005, in his second NFL game, Braylon Edwards gave Cleveland Browns fans a glimpse of his vast potential. Braylon Edwards got a touchdown! But only a few weeks later, Edwards was hospitalized and ended up missing two games when a small bump on his elbow swelled mysteriously. How swollen did it get? I was like, it doubled, maybe even tripled in size, just in this area right here, not the whole arm, just from about here to here, just the forearm. It just tripled and it was bad. When doctors told Edwards he had a staph infection, he was surprised and also scared, for this was no ordinary staph infection. It was a dangerous strain called MRSA. They told me what the worst case scenario could be if it gets out of control amputation here or possibly if you don't catch it in time you could die from staph infection. MRSA is short for methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. In the United States each year roughly 130,000 people are hospitalized with MRSA and approximately 5,000 die from it. A highly contagious bacterial infection it is resistant to many antibiotics and can swiftly become a blood or bone infection. It first appeared mostly in hospitals, but has now found its way into locker rooms, weight rooms, and training facilities. The Lycoming County Coroner telling Newswatch 16 that a staph infection killed the young college football star. In 2003, MRSA killed Ricky Linetti, a college football player in Pennsylvania, when his infection became a deadly pneumonia. Christie with Wesley back, gives it up, Hill puts it down. A number of current athletes, including Grant Hill and Junior Seau, have contracted MRSA after a surgery. So did former Washington Redskin Brandon Noble, whose infection was both painful and fast-moving. It felt like somebody was lighting me on fire. And one of the doctors, when I was checked into the ER, said, you know, if you waited even another 24 hours, you know, we could potentially be talking about either, you know, life or death or losing a, a leg. When athletes get MRSA infections, which don't involve surgery, these are called community acquired. These infections have struck at all athletic levels, from high school to the pros, and in virtually every sport. But most reported cases have been in wrestling, and particularly football, where the players have open wounds and frequent skin-to-skin -skin contact. Football is a sport that people tend to get a lot of breaks in the skin. And what we know about staph and MRSA is that staph requires uh, breaks in the skin to actually cause disease. Jeff Hageman is an epidemiologist with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. An expert in sports-related MRSA cases, he says it is mostly spread by direct physical contact, but can also be spread by teammates sharing razors, soap, or towels. It can come off our skin and onto items such as towels that are shared on the sidelines and so if somebody has an infection, trans pick it up on a towel, the next person wipes their face with that same towel, that's a potential route of transmission as well. In the NFL since 2003, the Redskins, Rams and Browns have reported multiple cases of MRSA and staph infections. Five different Browns have been stricken, including Brian Russell, who got two separate staph infections last season. 
Edwards says as these infections mounted, so did the concerns among the Browns players. What's going on? You know, it's, it's okay. It's one guy has it. Okay. Two guys have it. Well, you know, okay, three, four, five. It's like, you know, what's really going on? Is there something more than meets the eye? The Browns have declined to be interviewed for this story. Hageman, the MRSA expert, says it is still unclear why some teams get more infections than others. He cites an investigation he conducted in 2003 when the Rams and the Missouri State Health Department invited him to St. Louis after eight MRSA infections occurred among five different Rams. They had a brand new facility. It was very clean. And so again, um, I mean, it, it points out that really the main mode of transmission in these settings and other settings is through direct skin to skin contact. But Hageman also found other key factors. He says the players shared towels during practices and games and that players were skipping showers before using whirlpools. The Rams were also using a significant amount of antibiotics, which may have contributed to their MRSA outbreak. So someone that, that has taken a lot of antibiotics over the course of their lifetime or over the last few years, they may be more at risk for getting drug-resistant infections. So on this team, we identify that they were using 10 times the amount of antibiotics than compared with the same age group in the general population. Well, look at the reverse by Ganzi. After he starred for West Virginia last year, Mike Ganzi was seen as a possible first-round draft pick. But when he began feeling weak during his pre-draft workouts, he ended up signing with Miami as an undrafted free agent. Then Ganzi began feeling sicker. My knee was starting to get all kind of spots and, you know, start to form like pus and stuff around all around my whole knee. Ganzi went home to Cleveland, where he saw a doctor at the Cleveland Clinic. Did they identify it as MRSA right away? Yes, uh -huh. it was MRSA staff. I mean, he's like, you got to get in the hospital right away and get on some IVs. And I was like, what? <laughs> Ganzi spent two weeks in the hospital, where his infection made him so ill, he says he could not get out of bed. You can't physically move, and it just, it, take, it feels like you got hit by a truck, and you don't even know it. It's... It's unbelievable. Staff is something not to mess around with, and it's something you don't want. After losing 30 pounds, he was released by the heat just before training camp. Then Ganzi got more bad news. He had MRSA again, this time in his ankle. My whole ankle just blew up. It looked like a balloon, and it was on the, my left side of my right ankle. It, you know, it was just like, like again, like the zit pus. You know, it was very, very hard to touch and around the, around the infection and. You know, right when I got there, they had to have an ankle doctor come in and, you know, kind of open it up and take the infection out. Ganzi is now working out in West Virginia, trying to make his way back to the NBA, where several prominent players have also had staff infections, including Paul Pierce and Drew Gooden. Once you get it in there, it's kind of hard to get it out. Andre Harris, the trainer for the Milwaukee Bucks, says his team has had no staff infections yet and is trying to keep it that way. You want to try to be proactive about it and try to eliminate it before it even gets to be a problem. In January, the Bucks had their training facility sprayed with a sterilizing agent designed to kill bacteria. But Harris says players themselves must do what they can to prevent MRSA. Make sure you take care of your body, you clean yourself after you uh, work out and work on uh, the equipment. Um, Avoid using razors of other people. Don't share razors. Um, always wash your hands every time you come in contact with one player or another. So you always try to maintain hygiene that way. As for Mike Ganzi and Braylon Edwards, who have felt the effects of MRSA, they now say they take nothing for granted. I clean everything up and I bandage everything right away. I'm talking about if I get like the smallest thing, you know, I'm I'm right to the bathroom. I'm alcohol peroxide. Uh, ointment and then I'm a, a bandage. That way you never give anything a chance to to get touched, get infected. People have lost lives from this, have lost you know body parts. I mean it's something that you don't want to mess around with and if you see any little thing that looks suspicious, you know, get it checked out. Steve Delson reporting. Now the president of the National Athletic Trainers Association is Chuck Kimmel. We say good morning to him. Uh, check some some pretty gruesome accounts there. Uh, we obviously high profile athletes there. Talking just to people who are in rec leagues or high school or small colleges, athletes or coaches themselves. Uh, what should you look for here? 
Well, good day, Bob. Uh, I think the, the key points to remember are that uh, you shouldn't share things with uh, teammates or friends. Uh, you should shower as soon as uh, you're through with your activity. Um, you should uh, use antimicrobial wipes and uh, 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 liquids to, to cure, kill the germs and make sure uh, that the environment is uh, as germ-free as possible. Now, talking about towels, as we heard in that report, and again, we're putting up some uh, pictures of exactly what, what things can look like. How common is it still, even at the higher levels of sports, to share towels? I think it's extremely common, and uh, that may, in fact, be one of the most dangerous uh, aspects here because, you know, one of the parts of being a teammate is to, to share. And uh, if, uh, if a teammate says, hey, hand me that towel, that's what you're going to do and, uh, because that's a friend of yours. And if there's uh, the least bit of blood on there and it comes in contact with an open wound on the, on the athlete who uh, just received the towel, then, then uh, you're at risk. Um, now, what, you're at Austin P, where you're the head athletic trainer, and, and you began this year dispensing disposable, essentially, towels to a football team during games. Yes. Uh, uh, when I was at Austin P in the fall, uh, Gatorade was kind enough to give me uh, hand towel size towels, and uh, we, we never used uh, the same towel on two athletes. Uh, we dispose of each one after each use and uh, in an effort to try to uh, cut down the risk. Now, we talked about uh, how to prevent, but God forbid that it should strike. Uh, if you're an athlete, uh, what on your body are, are, do you need to be conscious of to, to bring to someone's attention immediately? Well, there should, should be no uncovered wounds, number one. And that's another uh, problem with athletics. You know, uh, sometimes the blood on a uniform uh, is a, a badge of honor. Uh, all wounds should be covered. Any type of swelling... Um, uh, around uh, uh, a pimple appearing uh, uh, lesion. Uh, most uh, frequently, uh, MRSA is first misdiagnosed as a spider bite because it, it kind of looks like a spider bite. And uh, in fact, uh, while you're treating the spider bite, the MRSA is really going to work. Serious stuff. Chuck Kimmel, I appreciate the words of caution this morning. Thanks a great deal. Thank you. Next up, the story of a.